So in this video, we will be covering pivoting for OCP. Now, first of all, will it even be needed? Well, OFSEC has officially stated that there may be pivoting required in the active directory machines on the XM. And anything in the course material is subject to be an XM. So this is something that we have to be prepared for. Uh, we don't want to be another one of those people that completely forgets about pivoting or don't understand it properly and then completely fail the exam because of it. I've seen it a few too many times and I really don't want that for you guys. So here is another example of um, the officially stated here that buffer overflow is something that will no longer be part of the exam, right? So we want to be focused on the things that matters and not waste time on the things that doesn't matter. And pivoting is something that massively matters, right? So we have to learn how to do this now. You can use any tool you want. I would tend to recommend something like Chisel or Legolo, as long as it's the most flexible, right? It doesn't matter whether you're on Windows or Linux, or whether you have admin or root or not, or whether SSH is open. You can always use this tool, these tools, so it's very, very flexible. And I will be giving you a video demonstration of how to do pivoting so that you will be prepared for the OSP. So you can do some passive checks with ARP to see which hosts are available. And we see two, but this is not reliable and I don't really recommend it. What I do recommend is to find out the, the route. So we see that we only have one network uh, interface, right? So this is pretty much the route huh? where we can discover hosts. So I want to grab a nmap compiled binary because we can actually transfer this over to the machine. And we can scan like that to find out which other hosts are on this network um, and which ports are open with. So I want to do like this and then I want to do like this. Then we can transfer that one over as well. And another thing that we will be needing is Chisel as well for pivoting. The reason why I like Chisel so much is because you can use it on Windows and Linux and you don't need SSH to be running anything. So it's an extremely flexible tool. And uh, yeah, it is just amazing. It is uh, always my go-to. So we will be grabbing this binary right here. Actually, no, I'll be grabbing this one right here. Let's do like this. Um. Yeah, so that's one works. I just want to change it to Chisel like this. And then I want to transfer this over as well. So Chisel. Chisel. So again, we're already root on this uh, host right there, but now we want to discover which other hosts are in the same network as this machine, right? So let's make nmap executable and let's make chisel executable. Let's double verify that. Yes. Okay. So now let's do this. I want to have not nmap in verbose mode and I want to do like this dash sm that's for a ping sweep an active ping sweep so we ping every single host on this network to see what's alive because if we scan 10 if we scan thousand ports huh, for every single host in its entire range it will just take forever so um, that's what i recommend and then let's see which ones are open like this so 
So here we can see some hosts. This is the one that we are currently on. This one is out of scope, but these are two machines that we can attack. So again, we can use an map to scan this. Mm. So these two. And we want a verbose. Mm. And then let's see. I want the output of this as well, and let's have it be a bit faster. So we can see right there, on this host right here, that port 80 is open, right? So we can already just try to curl that, but it doesn't seem like we can reach it. Interesting, right? Let's try this one. And obviously this one can reach, right? This is the machine that we're currently on. That's the reason we got shell to begin with. So, how can we possibly try to curl and to get access to the port 80 on this uh, on this machine that is inside the network of this machine right here? Um, that's exactly what I will be showing you with pivoting. So yeah, let us try that next. So, what we need is uh, we need to run chisel right there as a server. And then I run it like so, the ampersand, to run it in a background. So if I see jobs, then I can see that it's running, right? And um, for chisel, it, I believe it's chisel client, and then it is my Kali IP. And the, core, and the corresponding port, which I opened, which was 8081, as you can see right here. Um, 8081, and then it's R colon socks. And then you want to make sure that the proxy chains is using socks 5 and it's running on port 1080. So just make sure you save, uh, change that and save it. So let me try to connect. Boom, there we go. Now it's listening. And now this is connected, right? But I want to run this in a background as well so that I can use this host while it's connected. So listening, listening. I can run commands, good. Okay. So I couldn't curl here before and I still can't curl here. But what I can do now is that if I prepend it with proxy chains and I try to curl, boom, there we go. Now I can reach it. So as long as I prepend it with proxy chains, now that we have set up this Fox proxy tunnel with chisel with this machine and our machine, basically the only thing you really need is you really just need this. Set up chisel like this, server, whatever port you want in reverse mode, and then Chisel client on the machine that you're attacking. Specify your own IP, the port that you open, right? And then use Fox mode. And then the the Fox proxy port right here is uh, opened, and uh, so is this one that I opened for the Chisel server to be connected to. So now we can basically do whatever we want, right? As long as we again we prepend it with proxy chains. If I don't prepend it with proxy chains here, it won't be able to reach it because I'm just trying to connect to it normally via my Kali. But with proxy chains, I am routing it through this machine to then talk to this one. And the cool thing is that you can do it over you can do it in a browser as well. Again, not directly, but if you I'll show you as well. If you go in here and then you look at your proxies. And then you can make a new one, right? But 1080, localhost, Fox 5 proxy, remember? And if I now specify that I want my my web traffic to be routed through there, and then I try to connect, boom, there we go, right? I can communicate with this uh, with this host that I otherwise couldn't reach at all. So it's very, very useful. We can try this default admin cred. So for now, I'll just show you how to 
we'll try to exploit this machine just again show you how you would do this and you really don't feel you really don't need anything more than this it's very simple and i would highly recommend just using chisel because it always works windows it works linux it works whether it has ssh it works whether you're admin or root or not it works so it always works it's amazing so highly recommend and it's very very simple so we can see git stack right we can look up git stack exploit mm. <laughs> and again, when you search like this, you need to disable it again. Because the reason why is because it's going to route it through this machine. And this machine, because it's a CTL, it does not have access to the internet, right? So I can't even call Google.com. So that's kind of funny, but yeah. So just make sure you disable it with uh, your Foxy Poxy. And then there we go. Now we can do it. So. Mm. Let's see, git stank exploits. So let's see. IP config. We can try this one. That was wrong. So this is not, again, the one we want to focus on. Uh, we want to tank this one. So exploit. What command do I want to run? We can do who am I? And then this is the this is the IP that we are after. It tries to create the web shell right there, Tim's. That's fine, let's see. This is not really needed, but it's just a slight preference. You can substitute request and post. No, you can substitute post and get with request. Request works with both type of requests, which is quite handy. So... And again, you have to prepend it with proxy chains, otherwise it won't be able to reach it, right? So yeah. Now we have a shell and we are and the authority system on this Windows host, right? So there we go. This is basically everything that you need for pivoting. Plus as well, inside a community, we have a lot more. You get access to my full notes, you get access to our entire community of people doing the OCP right now. And we have a complete course on the entire OCP. We have, so, we have so much good stuff there. We have an entire checklist on every single section for when it comes to Active Directory, Pivesk, when it comes to initial access, and when it comes to even stuff like tunneling and pivoting. We have all of it, and we have all of the things that you need to make sure that you don't fuck up on the exam and the report. So pretty much everything that you will need to crush the OCP, we have all of that in there. And there's a clean checklist even to make sure that you're 100% ready to go into the OCP. Yeah, hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.